Hello everyone, I'm CZR and I speedrun games with my drums. Today I'll be showing you how to set up a MIDI instrument so you can start playing games on your PC. I'll be showing you the basics on how to set up a drum set, but the steps will be identical with any other MIDI instrument. First things you're gonna need is your MIDI instrument and your PC. First thing we're going to do is connect your MIDI instrument to your PC. The two common ways of doing that is connecting via USB or using an audio interface via MIDI cable. Once you have your MIDI instrument connected, head over to bohm.com. Here under products, you'll see MIDI Translator Pro. And there's two versions of the Bohm MIDI Translator. There's a paid version that is about $70 and a free trial. The free trial has a 20 minute time limit, but has full functionality and any files that you create in the free trial are transferable to the full version. I'll show the setup for the free trial. It'll be identical to the full version. So click on download free trial, choose whichever OS system you have, save and open the EXE. Install Bohm MIDI Translator Pro trial using the standard default options. Accept the agreement and hit next. Okay, now it's done. Hit finish and Bohm should open. Okay, you'll be prompted by this window. Just wait out the time and then hit OK. Now, before we get started with the translation, so let's actually set up our MIDI instrument. So head over here to Edit Project Properties and under Project Default MIDI Ports, choose your MIDI instrument or audio interface as the MIDI in port. In my case, it'll be UMC 404 HD. For MIDI output, choose the first option, Bone MIDI Translator 1 Virtual Out. Then under MIDI Router, Click on the MIDI in that you have chosen and drag the line out to the first option, Bohm MIDI Translator 1 Virtual Out. We're done setting up the MIDI instrument. So now we can actually start with the translations. Now the goal here is to get the MIDI signals and turn them into keystrokes. That way we can play PC games like using a mouse and keyboard. Now we're actually going to start the translation themselves, but there's a few things I want to clear up before then. Click on Add Translator and head over to the incoming section and check off Capture MIDI. This is probably the most important tool that this software has. It's a way to identify the types of triggers your instrument is creating. In my case, for the TD17KVX drum set, there's three different types of triggers I can work with. The first one being no on and no off, control change, and polyphonic key pressure. All of the signals in this drum set are made out of one of those three different triggers. So for example, let's start with Tom 2 head. We see that we have a note on and a note off in channel 10. The note for Tom 2 is 45. And then we have a certain velocity where we hit the drum. Now I'm going to show you how we can turn Tom 2 into uh, the key W, or in most games, the up direction. So we start here on the incoming tab. We make sure it's looking for MIDI messages and note on. When the Tom 2 note is on, we want W to be pressed. So we choose the right channel, the note for Tom 2, and we'll leave it at any velocity. This means that no matter how hard I hit Tom 2, this note will be triggered and W will be pressed. Now that we have identified the incoming signal we want Bone to look out for, we can now set the outgoing action, which in this case will be keystroke, down, and we're choosing W. For default, this option is enabled, but disable it. That way the keystroke is not repeated. Let's go back up here and actually name this W down, which means W is being pressed down. 
Now we have to create a translation for W being released or W up. So an easy way to do this is duplicate. Go back down here to the outgoing and change it to keystroke action up. And lastly, change this from no on to no off. Now let's head over here to the log window and hit Tom two. What you'll see is that it identified the note on in channel 10, note 45, which is Tom two, and it pressed W down. Then you'll see that it registered a note off from the same channel, same note, and released W. And there you go. That's how you set up a keystroke from a MIDI signal that is no on and no off. Now I'll cover control change and polyphonic key pressures. So now we'll add a new translator and we'll name this G down. We'll keep the MIDI message, but now I'll change to control change. And now let's use capture MIDI to identify the input. Control change on channel 10 with CC number four. So let's choose the right channel, set the control change number to four. And we will be changing the value. We want G to be pressed down when the value is at its maximum or when my hi-hats are fully pressed, which in my case is 90. So I'm switching it to 90 and we want the outgoing action to be a keystroke down for G. Disable enable repeat. And now let's create the G up. Forgot to change W to up. Now, like we did for W, we can duplicate G down. Rename it to G up. Head over here to outgoing and change the keystroke action to up and change the value that G stroke up is triggered at to zero. Or in my case, when my hi hats are fully open. Now let's head over to the log window and test this out. And there you go. Control change was identified with the value of 90. So G was pressed. And then lastly, a control change uh, with a value of zero was identified. So G was released. Lastly, I'm going to cover polyphonic key pressures. So in this case, we'll choose K. K down. Now we're going to change uh, note on to polyphonic key pressure. And let's, we're going to be using my right symbol in this example. I'm going to pinch it. And it looks like the polyphonic key pressure from my ride is in channel 10, note 51, uh, and max pressure 127, minimum pressure zero. You'll see that three different notes were triggered. Why? My right symbol actually has three different zones, the edge, the bow, and the bell of the symbol. When I use polyphonic key pressure, all three zones are triggered but I only need to write a translation for one of those notes. So in this case, we'll choose note 51. Let's choose the right channel, note 51. And we want K down to be triggered at our maximum pressure, which is 127. Head down to outgoing. And we'll choose the keystroke action as down. Disable enable repeat. And we're done with this one. Duplicate it. Rename it to K up or when K will be released. Change the pressure to zero and the keystroke action to up. Now let's head over to the log window and test it out. It identified polyphonic key pressure at channel 10, note 51, at maximum pressure, so it pressed K, 
then identified the polyphonic key pressure at pressure zero and released K. So that is it. We have set up our three different types of MIDI signals and translated them to keystrokes. Now you can translate as many MIDI signals as you have into an equal number of keystrokes. So let's map out a few more buttons and try a game out. Make sure that when you're working on your translations, you save often. When the 20 minutes are done for the free trial, it doesn't let you save. It will give you a two minute warning. Make sure you save then and frequently. So I finished setting up a few more translations. My Tom 2 will be up or W. Floor time will be D or right. My snare will be S or down. And my Tom 1 will be A or left. Here's the little message that you get when you have your two minute timer. So let's press OK and save. Now let's restart Bohm and let's give it a try. Most games already have a WASD layout, but I'll still show you how you can edit that in, in Fall Guys. It'll be a similar process for other games as well. Okay, now we're in Fall Guys, head over to Settings and Keyboard, and you'll see that we already have the WASD layout. Uh, w is up, A is left, D is right, and S is moved down, and we have jump as the space bar, which will be our bass drum, and dive as G, which will be our hi-hat. Most emulators will have the option to configure the controller inputs. In the controller configuration, just enter the keys that are bound to the MIDI signals in Bone. Save and start playing. So we're ready to go, let's play a game. Let's do it, let's do it. Uh, let's just go for it, go for it, go for it. No, we fell. <laughs> All right. Nope, nope. Oh, that's so hard. Go, 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 go. Nice. All right. We made it. <laughs> we got a checkpoint. Oh, no. No, we're not gonna get caught. Ah, we got it. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial. That was a lot of fun to make. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. If you do set up your MIDI instrument to play games, make sure you record yourself and send it to me. You can submit clips of you playing games with your MIDI instrument on my Discord under the MIDI Gaming Clips tab. And if you want to download the file that we worked on today for this tutorial, the file download will be under the resources tab. And also don't forget to check out my Twitch where I do live attempts at uh, Super Mario 64 speedruns. Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.